Hello everyone and welcome, I am Brock Goodman, and today this is going to be my ranking of all of these zombie maps in Treyarch Zombies, not including the side Call of Duty modes, only Treyarch Zombies. Based off of the way that I play zombies is how I'm going to be basing this list. So your opinion might be completely different than mine, and it probably is, so just be aware of that. And so the bar is set to where I like my zombie maps. I like to play my zombie maps without doing any easter eggs. I don't like to go into easter egg steps. I will include zombie maps that have good easter eggs if I feel like I like to play them. And that just gets bonus points. But usually I just like to survive a short little while into a game. Don't really necessarily go into high rounds in a lot of them. Just play a little bit of zombies and just chill. And that's how I like to play zombies. And I'm not going to be including smaller maps like Town, Farm. I'm going to leave out the Giant because I don't really just think they deserve to be in here. Because they kind of mesh with other maps. So, just so you know. I have 29 zombie maps that I'm going over. So Now in my 29th spot, I have Zetsubo no Shima. I've always hated this map. And mainly that's because it's, I like to call it, annoying. Because it's a mix of boring and annoying. Basically everything you have to do in that map just takes... A lot of time to do for no reason, like filling your bucket with water, turning on the power, getting the plants every single round to do things, getting the skull of Nansapwa, getting the KT4, it's everything. And it's not only that, but it's annoying to have to go around the map, spending all of your points, getting thrashers constantly, and some of the steps for even just upgrading the wonder weapon is super tedious compared to other maps, which just makes it super unlikable. Now there's certain things in the map that aren't necessarily that bad. I would prefer to play any other map than this, even though that, that does have the spider boss fight, which is like one of my favorite features in any zombie map. I still just hate doing everything else in Zetsubo, so it's got to come in last. In my 28th spot, I have Alpha Omega, my least favorite Black Ops 4 map, and that is mainly because it really doesn't have anything going for it, and when you turn on the second power when you start to get Pack-a-Punch and open up the whole map, you get crawlers. Again, uninspired crawlers. And there's an electric crawler that shoots at you. It's super annoying already, but the gas crawlers, those are a big no-no. I thought the catalyst zombies in the chaos maps were already bad enough, but they went and topped it with the crawlers because they made just everything about them super cancer and it makes me not even not even turn on the power, not even open up the whole map for the whole thing. I just don't even bother. I leave the game before that even happens. And even if I was to open Pack-a-Punch and actually Pack-a-Punch, Pack-a-Punch is just super hard to keep open because you have to keep on opening valves and nobody wants to go and do that. So yeah, least favorite Black Ops 4 map. In the number 27th spot, I have Dead of the Night. Now don't get me wrong here. I love this map. It has a cool, super cool aesthetic, it has a really nice map design, I don't even mind pack -a -punch, the pack-a-punch process all that much. But the one thing that kills it for me in this map is the Nosferatus. If you remove them, it would just improve the map so much. It's not just them, but everything else you have to deal with with the Nosferatus, it's just not worth playing the map. I've made a whole video on why I don't like the Nosferatu, so you can go and watch that if you want. But if you really need to know right now, it's just they hit you super easily and they're different than normal zombies, and it sucks. What the big deer call you? Nosy Part 2. Well, adios, say Nosy Part 2. Next, we have my least favorite Black Ops 2 map, which is Nuketown. Now, Nuketown is already really small and it doesn't have a lot going for it, but on top of that, you have the perks that don't come in immediately, and it makes it harder than it really needs to be, and it makes it completely random. Although it could make it fun, which is why it's above the map that is, it's just super unnecessary. And when you do get good luck with the perks, it's like, what am I supposed to do? What are you supposed to do in it? Survive? No, I want to kill myself. In the number 25th spot, I have Knocked. Now, that's a pretty controversial one, because Noct, it's a classic. It's the first Zombies map. It's gotta be good. No, it doesn't have to be good. It was good at the time, but it's not. I don't feel like I want to play the map right now. I don't want to go into the map, wait a thousand years for the Zombies to come to the window so I can kill them. It's not worth it. And also, if there's nothing going for this map with anything to do in it. Other than Black Ops 3, I have had some fun trying to survive with friends. But that's as far as it goes. 
In my number 24th spot, I have Voyage of Despair. Now, I feel like this map gets a lot more hate than it really deserves, but it still is really down in the list because there are a lot of things in the do in the map, but I just don't want to do them. And also on top of everything, there's the Catalyst Zombies, Blight Fathers, Stokers that you really just don't want to deal with in the map. In my 23rd spot, I have Shangri-La. Now, yeah, I don't like this map. I'm one of those people that don't like the map, but that's just because of my playstyle, like I said. It's mostly because I can't have a casual experience in the map. There are a lot of things in the map as well, like the boss zombies that you get and the traps that go against you. It kind of sucks. I still can go into this map and have a good time if I wanted to, but that's a rare occasion. Sounds like someone Number 22, we have five. Again, this is a map where there's not a lot to do. And on top of that, you have the rounds where the Pentagon Thief comes to take your weapons. It gives me anxiety every time I play the map and I dread the moment that he appears and takes my weapons. Because I don't know if I'm going to get it back and I kind of don't want to deal with that. We're still in the kind of the stages of the map where it's still fun to play and this definitely goes for five. In the number 21 spot, we have Shinonuma. I really don't like this map in Black Ops 1 because the beginning is so slow and later on there's nothing that happens. But in World at War, it's the way to get to high rounds if you want to, without even really trying too hard. And in Black Ops 3, it's actually pretty fun to play because it's a kind of a simple kind of map. You're not expected to survive super long and you don't have to do anything complicated. A nice casual experience and that's kind of what I'm looking for here. It isn't the best, but it's not the worst. Next we have Ancient Evil. Now this map is more balanced with the boss zombies than most Black Ops 4 maps. Nothing super annoying. The only thing I really have to say that's annoying about this map is how you have to get Pack-a-Punch because you go into that second area and then there's no way to get back until you open Pack-a-Punch which can be super frustrating. You have to wait for your special weapon to come up and that's like how you survive on this game. So doing that part in later rounds, it's not possible. So. Yeah, I'm going to have to put it lower on the list because of that, but still, it's not a terrible map. In number 19, we have Revelations. I gotta say, Revelations is an extremely easy map. I went to my highest round on the map, which is 82. Didn't really even have to try. I just had the two wonder weapons and the special weapon, and I just went super high in the rounds. kind of like that about it, but at the same time, it's kind of its downfall. And other than that, it's not really too interesting. The work up to it isn't really interesting because you just hit the box a shit ton and then you get what you need. So kind of uninteresting and pretty easy, but still a little fun. Number 18, we have Verruckt. I like Verruckt because you can end games really quickly because it's bare bone, but it's not like there's nothing to do in the map. If I just really want a quick game and get it done and over with, maybe get to round 20 and just naturally die, this is the map to do it in. There's no real good training area and for that it has to be put lower on the list. But I still like this map, and I actually play it sometimes. For number 17, we have Die Rise. I originally had this way lower on the list, down to like 22nd spot, but I played it to get gameplay for this footage. Gameplay for this footage, that made sense. <laughs> the gameplay that you're seeing right now. And I just had such a good time with the map. It is a bit challenging, and it's unique how you, you have to fall down between different buildings, and you do have to wait for elevators. That's kind of the only downfall of the map. The Slickifier is amazing, and overall, it's just an interesting experience. At this point, we are at the halfway point. So next, we have Tog Der Toten. It has a nice casual experience, but doesn't have a lot going for it again. But it is one of the best maps to get if you're just not looking for a lot of special zombies and you just want to get Pack-a-Punch really quick. It's a good map for that. And it obviously just looks better than Call of the Dead, so... Let's get bonus points from that. On the number 15th spot, we have 9. This is the best Chaos Story Black Ops 4 map because its beginning game is just so easy to set up on and it's, it makes the rest of the game not as bad. You have more special zombies in this than any other map, but if you don't go to the high rounds, you don't even have to deal with them. And usually I just leave by like round 20 anyway, so I don't even have to deal with it. Sometimes the gladiators can be annoying and the tigers can be really annoying as well, but there's just something going on in the map constantly. And if it wasn't for the tigers and the gladiators, it might be like way higher on the list, but it's got special zombies. So uh, yeah, you're going down at 15 there, guy. And the number 14th spot, we have Moon. 
Now, this is probably one of the most interesting maps because it's not even on Earth. It's the one map that's not even on Earth. So that means you got zero, or you got some gravity. You have low gravity, and that doesn't happen in a lot of other maps. It is kind of annoying with the excavators and having to go back to Earth constantly. And a lot of different things can screw you over in the map for no reason. But I mean, <laughs> that's kind of just Black Ops 4. So that is in an interesting steady setting. So Number 13, we have Blood of the Dead. I know a lot of people don't like Blood of the Dead. But that's probably because that they do the Easter egg. And I don't do Easter eggs, so I don't have to worry about it. It's the one map that I like training in in that first starting area and Brutus actually makes the map more entertaining and the setup on it is actually really interesting with the Black Ops 4 engine because you have the catwalk run and you still have the special weapon in order to counter whatever happens and it kind of fixes the early game of Black Ops 4. One thing I do have to say about it though is getting Pack-a-Punch sucks with the shield and trying to find out where Pack-a-Punch is sucks as well so it gets negative points for that, but I just really like playing this map over a lot of other Black Ops 4 maps. Number 12, we have Call of the Dead. Now, I have to admit, I haven't played Call of the Dead a whole lot, but I really like the style that it has, and no other map has a boss zombie like George. Although he can be annoying at times, it is more interesting than a lot of the other maps that we've seen. But in general, I just like the style of the map, and that's why I rated it a bit higher. In number 11, we have Transit. Now, Transit... It doesn't work as a map. As a normal zombies map that we've been playing for all this time, it doesn't work like that. It works in a different kind of way where you have to ride on the bus and just try to survive on the bus as long as you can. And as long as you do that, you can definitely have some fun on this map. This map would be rated a lot lower, but it's not boring. It's definitely not boring. It's everything but boring. Some things are annoying and that's definitely obvious, but you expect that kind of stuff from transit. You go into transit and expect things to happen. As long as you can expect them, then you can go into the map knowing to expect them. It works, just like that. And now we are in our top 10, and in the 10th spot we have Doris. Now Doris is definitely the best World at War map, because I remember going into Doris just having such a good time on that map. There was just something about it that just worked so well as a zombies map that I haven't really felt with any other map, and it definitely deserves a high spot. Number nine, we have Classified. I just kind of view Classified as the casual map to play in Black Ops 4, and really there's no other map like it. It basically just fixes everything that I didn't like in 5, and just makes it a bit more better. And I didn't mind the Black Ops 4 engine too much, if it was not in the Black Ops 4 engine, it would definitely be real, a really good map, but it is, so it's at the number 9 spot. Number 8, we have Shadows of Evil. Now, I remember going into this map when it first came out, and I was just awed by the aesthetic of the map. The map looks so damn good, and for that, I had to put it at a high spot. But not only that, but the gameplay, it's something kind of different. Back when Black Ops 3 first came out, a lot of people didn't like this map, but I still really liked it, and it still continues to be one of my favorite maps. Number seven, we have Ascension. Ascension is a really easy map, but it's really good for just casually surviving and just going really high without even really trying. Of course, you do have the monkeys, which is a bit annoying, but they can be manipulated in your favor to get perks. And if you're really shit at the game, you'll just lose your perks. But if you get better, you can get better at Ascension, but just the normal zombie rounds, they're pretty easy, so... That's kind of what I like in a zombies map, so it's getting put at number 7. Number 6, we have Mob of the Dead. Mob of the Dead, everybody can agree that it's just an amazing map. The setting is absolutely beautiful, and it's definitely a challenge while still being kind of an easy map. You can always revive yourself with the afterlife. In multiplayer, you only get one, but in uh, solo player, solo, that's what it's called. You get three whole chances to revive yourself. And that's if you have them all. Each round you get one more. So in term, that's just way better than Quick Revive. And you can actually strategize on this map to get it to work better in your favor. And I really like that about this map. So it's going at number six. At number five, we have Origins. In Origins, I feel like there's always something to do in the map. Not necessarily that you want to do it. If you don't want to do it, then the map is pretty bad. But if you do want to do it and going into the map expecting that you want to do it, it's pretty fun. If you're good at zombies, this is a definitely 
a good map to play because you can prove yourself that you can do really good and get all the stabs and just getting the stabs is just a super good reward it makes the map kind of easy but not super straightforward number four we have gorod krovi Gorod Krovi is probably the most challenging map in Black Ops 3. And Gorod Krovi is another one of those maps that there's always something going on. There's always something to do. And it's a map where you could die pretty quickly, so you're not going to have a game that's lasting super long. And this is probably one of the best paced maps out of any other map. And now we are at our top three, and my third spot is Buried. This is a little bit of a controversial pick. I just have a really good time playing Buried because like I said, I like it when it's easy and you can just have kind of a casual experience. There's also strategy that goes into the map, which I kind of like to utilize. Usually when I always play this map, I find some way to die in a stupid way, which is kind of funny because it's just, you play Buried so much that you just try to challenge yourself to do something else and it kind of naturally just ends itself. And for me, I like that when that happens because you don't go on for super long, but at the same time you could. And this map just is super unique from any other map that I feel like. Number two, I have Derizon Track. For me, Derizon Track is just basically a better Origins. You can get the, the bows, not the stabs. And unlike Origins, you can actually go around the map and just survive normally without the bows if you want to and still have a pretty decent time. If you are getting the bows though, I probably recommend it still over Origins because there's always something that you do to upgrade the bows, whereas Origins it's just a lot of running around for the most part. But the map design when it first came out, I thought it to be perfect. It was absolutely, it flows super well and I just like how it goes. Not super challenging, but not super easy. It's in a really good spot. And in my number one spot, I have Kino de Toten. Yes, I'm one of those people. Bite me. Kino is one of the maps that I can have the most casual experience on. And it's not super straightforward because you can train in the stage area and have a super easy time. But if you go anywhere else in the map, it's a challenge. It's a really big challenge to actually survive anywhere else. You got super tight corridors, but if you just run through it, you have some traps to help you out if you need it. If you want to have a fast game, you can go in the alleyway and try to survive in there if you like. Even if you are playing it to the best of your ability and just training in the stage, you have the Nova Crawlers, which kind of keeps you on your toes, so it's not just a straightforward experience. And Kino is actually the one map where you don't have to discover the whole map in order to get Pack-a-Punch. You can completely leave half the map closed, not even bother with it, and still get Pack-a-Punch if you want to. This map is probably what got a lot of people into zombies in the first place, and it definitely sets a good example for what zombies is. So if you are looking for the most purest form of just zombies, and Call of Duty, Kino de Toten is the map. So those are all the maps. I'm not sure a whole lot of people are going to agree with this list, but I'm just putting this out there because I really had nothing else to do. I kind of like these videos because it's interesting to see what people have to say. So I don't know. If you found this interesting, cool. Let me know. So that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, like the video. If you like my other videos, make sure to subscribe. But other than that, I'll see you all later unless you see me first. And bye.